Hi guys, we're going to be talking about EIPCR, enzymatic inverse PCR. This is kind of a neat PCR trick uh, and it makes you, kind of bends your mind in terms of how you think about PCR. So, or at least it bent my mind when I first thought about it. So, normally you're going to be thinking about PCR as if we, if we start off with a plasmid that has some part in it, we're going to have our oligos flanking that part and we're going to amplify whatever is in between those oligos, oligos included. That's how a normal PCR works. That's what we're all well and used to. Uh, but an EIPCR is slightly different in that instead of amplifying the part, we're going to be amplifying the plasmid. So the plasmid becomes the part. Whoops. So our oligos are going to be facing that way. So before I go on any further, let's just use a quick example. Let's say that we have our part. Um, we have, let's say we have three parts. So one, two, three. We have part A, we have part B, and we have part C. And furthermore, let's say that we don't want part B. Part B, we decided, is bad. We want to get rid of part B, and we don't have any restriction sites in between A and B, and we don't have any restriction sites in between B and C. So part B is going to be a huge pain in the neck to get rid of. And we're going to add on top of that. We're going to say, not only do we want to get rid of part B, and it's going to be a headache to get rid of it, we also want to add something in place of part B. We'll say a small terminator, about 20 base pairs. So a small little part. So if you need to do this, if you need to add a small part in, or if you need to get rid of a part that's tricky, or you want to do both at the same time, then EIPCR is going to be the trick for you. <clears throat> so how this works is normally we have an oligo that goes there. But EIPCR, no. We're actually going to be doing the reverse complement. So, oh, excuse me, not the reverse complement of that oligo. But if we want to get rid of B, we're going to flank B with our primers. But our primers are going to be facing away from B. So there is primer 1, and here is primer 2. So we'll say 1R and 1F. And these primers are going to polymerize around the plasmid. So you can imagine that I'll draw a little diagram of our plasmid. Let me just change colors to keep everything consistent. So we have a little mini map of our plasmid. And here are our little parts. We have A, B, and C. And then our oligos are going to be running that way and that way. So this oligo is going to go all the way around. Whoops. All the way around. This all goes going to go all the way around. And I, that, I stopped there. I shouldn't have. This is going to go all the way around. So that's what we're saying. This, this all go is going to polymerize around the entire plasmid. It's an ugly, I can't draw big like that. I always mess up. And this all go is going to polymerize around the entire plasmid as well. <clears throat> so that we end up with the backbone as the part. So then what? What do we do next? And I, I kind of messed this oligo up. It looks kind of ugly. It should be flanking that part. So this is, whoa, I cannot draw straight lines for the life of me. There we go. So there, there, I figured out how to have a ruler. So this oligo is going to be starting from there, and this oligo is going to be starting from there. And they're going to amplify that backbone. So what do we do about that? That's not going to really help us cloning anything. The trick is what we add on to the five prime of these oligos. So we can add on a little tail on each one of these. So here's our five prime tail. And on this tail, we have included the, the 20 base pair part that we want. And on this tail, we're not going to include any base pairs. We're just going to put a restriction site there. And we'll say we're going to put a, how about an XBA site, XBA1, which can be purchased for the reasonable price of $10,000 from NEB. Uh, and we're going to have an XBA site here as well.
So now, if we think about our little mini map up here, we're going to add on our little yellow linkers, and here's another yellow linker. And we're going to leave out this terminator for now. But our linkers have these XBA sites on them, so that when we digest with XBA, which is actually a really good enzyme to use for this type of EIPCR, so that's why I give NEB so much of our lab's money. Um, so when we digest, we're going to, these little uh, floppy ends that we added onto our oligos, they're going to snap together, and we're going to close up this circle. And when we do that, we're going to be, uh, let's see how I can draw this. We're going to digest here. Let me change colors. We're going to digest at this x boss site and digest at this x boss site. And these guys are going to be able to snap together. And just to make everything clear, so this, I wonder if my little ruler, ooh, my ruler trick works this way too. Whoops. So this is going to go all the way around. To there. And it's going to actually amplify a little bit of that yellow squiggly. So with our X-Boss site. And our bottom oligo is going to do the exact same thing. Whoops. Oh, neat. I'm learning more and more about this program. And we're going to, let's see here. We're going to go up here, here, and we're actually going to start to amplify a little bit of 1F's squiggly as well. So this is getting confusing now. Um, let's see, maybe we can step back and make this. Oops. So I'm actually going to jump across. This is still actually amplifying this oligo, but just for the diagram, I'm going to jump up here. And we're then going to even start to amplify a little bit of this squiggly. We're going to amplify our terminator. And we're going to get this x boss site. So we have this huge piece of double-stranded DNA. Each piece of double-stranded DNA at each end has an x boss site so that we can just digest these x boss sites. So this is actually one x boss site. And then these can be ligated together. And what we're going to end up with is I'm just going to take a closer look at this whole region right here. What we're going to end up with is our part A or part C and then we're going to have our little yellow part just to kind of make it clear and then our terminator in between this is the part that we added so 20 base pair terminator and then we're going to have an x boss site right here. So x boss. And then if we wanted to map our oligos onto this, we can do that right now. So our 1R is going to be here. And it would have actually had a little bit extra, it's, here's that x -boss site, and it has that five base pair spacer, and so that's one R. 
and our 1F would have been binding from there all the way to there. So here's that XBOS site, here's that terminator, homology is going to be right there. It brought along this part, this guy only has homology here, and that's what it looks like. The uh, rest of the thing, the rest of the plasmid is going to look like that. And that's pretty much how it works. So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, it's, it's a pretty difficult concept to, to understand, but it's very useful. You can delete things with it. You can insert things with it. It's a, another great way of making libraries. Um, instead of this T, I could have inserted like, N, like, I don't know, 20 Ns. That's not really that realistic, but you could get a huge library that way. And you could imagine that you could do that in the middle of a part. So if I have a part right here inside of a plasmid, and I want to mutate this entire section, I could just have an oligo going that way, and another oligo that binds going that way. And then I have a floppy end with about 20 ends on it. So we'll just say 20 ends. And then XBAR, and then this guy is a floppy region that has an XBAR. I run that PCR, cut them together, and I now have this same part, uh, except that in this middle region that I targeted for mutagenesis, it now has 20 ends. So again, it's a real useful uh, technique. A couple of disadvantages with it are that you have to PCR a lot of material which means that you can get mutations in your backbone which you don't always sequence. So that's kind of tricky. You might get some weird effects going. Also, it can get a little pricey when you're running through that much enzyme. We just uh, purified our own tax, so we can, we can use that. It's pretty much free for us. I highly recommend you guys do it as well. Um, but that's, that's all I can think about for now. So EIPCR, if you have any questions, let me know and I'll try to answer your questions.